So in this video, we are going to look at a few of the questions that some of you have had from exercise 5.6. I'm going to whip through them. Uh, this is our first question. Number one, express four cosine squared x minus sine squared x in terms of cosine x. Well, uh, we're going to use our trig identity. We want just cosines, so we're going to convert this here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go four cosine squared x minus bracket one minus cosine squared x. Now, hopefully you can see what I've done there. Minus, and I've changed sine squared x into what it is uh, using the trig identity. The trig identity I've used is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And uh, I know that sine squared x is therefore equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. I've just rearranged the formula there. hope that makes sense. Now, for cosine x squared x minus 1, and then minus minus cosine squared x, minus minus is a positive, so I end up with, as my final answer, 4 cosine squared x plus 1. So that's the answer to the first one. Now I'm going to move to question 5b, and we're trying to prove that this, bracket 4 sine theta plus 3 cosine theta squared, plus bracket 3 sine theta minus 4 cosine theta bracket squared is equal to, not 2, sorry, in the exercise book it says equal to 25. Okay, so how are we going to prove this? First step out is to expand out the brackets. So we're going to have 16 sine squared theta plus 24 sine theta cosine theta plus 9 cosine squared theta. That's the first bracket. Now if you are struggling with this, my suggestion is to draw out your double brackets. So bracket 4 sine theta plus 3 cosine theta times bracket 4 sine theta plus 3 cosine theta and then do FOIL and you'll end up with this. Okay, now I'm going to do the same for the second bracket but I'm, uh, I'm running out of room, I'm, maybe I'll just rub this identity off for the moment. Okay, uh, plus uh, 3 times sine theta times 3 sine theta is 9 sine squared theta a minus uh, 24 sine theta cosine theta plus 16 cosine squared theta. Okay, so, so our next line, we will see that uh, this and this cancel each other out. And in total, we have 16 uh, plus 9, so we have 25 sine squared thetas, and we have the same number of cosine squared thetas. Now, I hope you can see where we're going with this. We're going to factorize, so we pull the 25 out, and we're going to have in the bracket sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. But hold, a, hold up a minute, you know what this is. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is, in fact, 1, so it's 25 times 1, so our answer is 25. We've proved what we needed to prove. This was uh, your question, Tanaka. So how do we prove that this is equivalent to this? Well, remember we've got our two identities that we're using, and clearly the, the most obvious way of proceeding here is to use our tan identity. So tan squared alpha or a must be equal to sine squared a over cosine squared a. And uh, tan B squared beta will be sine squared beta divided by sine, uh, sorry, cosine squared beta. Okay, now I think if you think carefully about things, you know how you're going to get this as a denominator, you're going to cross multiply. So my next step will be sine squared a cosine squared b minus sine squared b cosine squared a all over cosine squared a cosine squared b. Now at this point we're right with the denominator, something's not quite right with our numerator, so what are we going to do? Well, now we're going to use our other rule, our other identity. We're going to get rid of these cosines, because we've got to get rid of them, and we're going to turn them into sines. So my next line is going to read sine squared a into 1 minus sine squared b 
minus sine squared b into 1 minus sine squared a all over cosine squared a cosine squared b. So this here is 1 minus sine squared a and this here is 1 minus sine squared b. Hope that makes sense. And now we're going to expand out our brackets. So on top we're going to have sine squared alpha. Then we're going to have sine squared alpha minus sine squared beta, which is minus sine squared alpha sine squared beta, or b, sorry. Uh, and then this minus applies to everything here. So maybe I'll do a bracket first so that we don't stuff it up. Sine squared b minus sine squared a sine squared b. So uh, this minus applies to all of this, sine squared b, minus sine squared a, sine squared b, and all over cosine squared a, cosine squared b. Last step, if you look carefully, this minus sine squared a, sine squared b, is going to cancel out this minus minus sine squared a, sine squared b, because minus minus is a plus, so this and this will be gone, leaving us finally with sine squared a, minus sine squared b all over cosine squared a cosine squared b and that is what we were trying to prove. Okay for our uh, final question that we're going to do in this uh, video is uh, question 9 a and b. Uh, so a part a is asking us to express 2 cosine x minus sine squared x in this form here cosine x plus p all squared plus q Hopefully, um, you can see what they're doing here. First of all, we want to uh, turn this into um, cosine using our identity. So my first step would be it's going to be minus uh, 1 minus cosine squared x. And when we uh, put this all together, we've got cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x minus 1. Since uh, minus 1, when we expand the brackets, a minus times a minus is positive, so positive cosine squared x. Okay, at this point, you should be thinking, hmm, this rings a bell. This is completing the square. So, to complete the square for this equation here, we're going to go cosine x plus 1, half of this, right, squared, subtract 1, so that this bit here that I've just written is equivalent to this bit here and then we also have a minus one that we need to stick on the end this bit here is this bit here so cosine x plus one all squared minus two so that is our equation so therefore p is one and q is minus two so at this point we now need to decide uh, in part B, what is the maximum and minimum values of this? Okay, what are the maximum and minimum values? Okay, let's just think about our ordinary cosine graph for a moment. Here's our ordinary cosine graph. You know that the range on an ordinary cosine graph is from minus 1 to 1, right? So if this was minus 1, you'd have 0 squared, which is 0. So that is our minimum value. Since the smallest value you can have here is a 0, because anything you square is going to be positive, right? So if you put in a negative number here, well, you can't get, it, you can't get a negative number anyway. The smallest you can get in here is 0, and 0 squared is 0. Subtract 2, that's our minimum value. What's the largest value we can get? Well, the largest value for a cosine x is 1. So if we stick in a 1 here, we get 1 plus 1. And when we square 2, we get 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. So our range for this function is... Uh, we'll just call this function f of x. Uh, this is our function f of x. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Keep sending me your questions if you're stuck. Good luck.